It's interesting hearing two different versions of the same scripture. Sometimes we need to approach the scriptures cognitively, and sometimes we need to approach them at an emotional level. And I hope that through those two readings of scripture that are similar and yet so different, God might find a way in through your cognition or your feelings to experience God's presence and fullness today. I mentioned before, I, in a previous time I preached, that I work as a pastoral counselor. That's my, that's my career, that's my ministry at this point, after working many years as a pastor. I'm grateful for the opportunity I have to, to help people, not just with the cognitive things in their life, but with the emotional things as well. And I want to share in today's sermon a, a more emotional approach to the scriptures allowing ourselves not just to think, but to feel, to imagine ourselves in the place of those who first heard those words from David and from Jesus. I'm jumping ahead in the church calendar today with a bit of emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Uh, frankly, it deserves more than one Sunday in Pentecost. I'm doing so in order to share a part of what I do in my counseling practice so that uh, it may help feed your souls and heal your hearts. The Holy Spirit, it's often referred to using the metaphors of wind and fire. Indeed, the word for spirit in Greek and Hebrew is, is wind, ruach. However, I want us to encounter the Holy Spirit in a very personal way today. I invite you to consider the Holy Spirit as breath, the breath of God, the breath of the Spirit, the breath that moves even through our mouths, our noses, our throats and lungs right this moment. God's Spirit is as close or closer than the breath that is moving us moving in us right now, take a moment to feel that spirit. Just breathe it in and breathe it out. One of the things I've appreciated most about my pastoral counseling education has been the use of silence, and breathing exercises and meditation. We did this at the beginning of most of our classes over the three years that I was in school. I admit that it took me a while to get used to extended periods of silence. We don't use a lot of silence in the United Methodist Church, do we? When I was growing up on most Sundays, we had a moment of silent prayer and worship. It was typically about 15 seconds long. I know because I timed it on occasion. And if you noticed, the silent prayer today, I used my watch and counted 30 seconds. If it was any longer than 15 as a kid, people would start getting a little uncomfortable. You know, they would they'd shift in their seats, start peeking to see if anybody else was still there. If the moment of silence was longer than a minute, you could just feel the anxiety rising in the room. Did you hear the squeaking when we were trying to be silent before? You know, in every little breath and every little noise. So, so during my ministry, I didn't use silence a whole lot, just on certain occasions to make a point. I now see this as a significant omission. There's a lot of benefit from using silence and meditation and worship, particularly because it gives us a chance to listen and speak with God in our own words and our, in our own way. It also gives us a chance to experience God, to feel the presence of God right here with us in this place. Experiencing is, is more than just hearing and speaking and thinking about God, which is what we most often do in the church. Experiencing involves all of our senses, our touch, our taste, our smell. 
In some churches and religious traditions, silence and meditation are much more common. Anybody ever been to an Orthodox service? Eastern Orthodox service? Yeah. There's a lot of silence. There was a long tradition of meditation in the early church, particularly during the times of the monastic tradition and the desert fathers and mothers, Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross. Meditation is common in most Eastern religious traditions, but it's part of our tradition too, and I think Christians can use it and find it helpful. So today I thought I'd give you the opportunity to experience some guided Christian meditation. It's time for us to stop doing, just for a little while. Our brains are so good at living in the future or living in the past. And that's what gives us the most anxiety. Yes, we have to plan, we have to be ready for the future. Yes, we have to learn from the past. But it's important to step back from that for a while and just be in the present and in the presence of God every once in a while. So during the next few minutes, I'm going to move in a, to a more meditative reading of what is one of the most comforting passages in the Bible, the 23rd Psalm, and then conclude with another period of breathing. So this is a different sermon today. This is where you have to do a lot of the work. But as Jesus says in another part of the scripture, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So get yourselves comfortable. Sit down on those pews. Notice that there's padding on them. Put your backs against the back of the seat if that's comfortable for you. Uncross your legs. Just, just do whatever you need to do to be comfortable in your seat. If you want to close your eyes, that's great. But if you don't, just find a spot on the floor in front of you or the back of the person's head. I personally like to look at the candles when I'm meditating. It reminds me of prayer going up to God. As we're doing this exercise, yeah, it's okay if you fall asleep. It's perfectly all right. Don't judge yourself. We do a lot of that. When you awaken, just go back to breathing and experience. So close your eyes or focus or get ready. I invite you now to pay special attention to your breathing. Feel, notice the air coming into your lungs and back out again. Notice what happens as the air passes through your nose, the back of your throat, down into your lungs. Notice how it's drier and cooler on the way in and warmer and more moist on the way out. Just take a moment and focus on your breathing. Now on your in-breath, imagine yourself Breathing in peace. Bringing in the peace, breathing in the peace of God, which passes all understanding. And on your out breath, imagine yourself breathing out love. Breathe in peace, breathe out love. Breathe in that peace. Let it go to all those parts of your body that are tense and tight, worried, nervous, depressed. Let the peace swirl around. And remove all the dirt. And breathe it out again. And as you breathe, breathe out the love that God has given to you. Breathe in peace and breathe out love.
continue to breathe. And I will begin to read the 23rd Psalm to you. I invite you to experience God's presence in this psalm. Avoid thinking about analyzing it. Just try to experience it. I am not inviting you into an intellectual exercise, but a feeling exercise. Pay attention to the feelings that come up in you as I read. Think if you want to, but try, try to notice the thoughts that come up, and then just let them pass by and return to your breathing. Let yourself, just for now, be in the presence of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is in charge. I don't have anything I need. Just God. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Feel and smell that grass on a warm summer's day. He leads me beside still waters. Touch the water in your mind. Smell the freshness. Take a taste of that good, clear water. Use all of your senses as you rest in this place. He restores my soul. Feel yourself now growing stronger. Feel yourself healing. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, those scary places, those anxious places, you know that feeling. Remember that you have the Spirit of God with you. And you say, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, O God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Even as everyone struggles to take away what I have. You build a feast right on the table in front of me and let me have everything I need. Maybe not what I want, but what I need. You anoint my head with oil. Feel that healing oil come spilling down over your head and onto your body. My cup overflows. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This moment can be mine any time I want. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord, strong safe with everything I need for the rest of my life. Now just ponder those words and continue to breathe in peace and breathe out love. I invite you to slowly come back into this space as you feel ready. Open your eyes, stretch your arms and legs, poke the person next to you who's fallen asleep. And uh, remember this feeling as you continue through the day and week. At any time, this gift is yours. Lather, rinse, and repeat. 
Take it with you. Indeed, may you be blessed every day by the very real and the very present Holy Spirit of God. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart, I pray. Amen. And here's what I ask in the discipleship commitment. Take some time this week to stop doing for a while and just allow yourself to be in the presence of God. It's that being that gives us the energy to do the doing. And so with the Holy Spirit in our lives, it is well with our souls I invite you to stand as you're able in heart, in posture, and sing with me number 377.